So good morning. Um, what I'm going to describe to you uh, involves uh, patients who enrolled in a prospective clinical trial, um, which was coordinated by the, e uh, the ECOG Akron um, Cancer Research Group. This is a federally funded group uh, supported by the NCI. And um, we um, were fortunate enough to receive funding from the Breast Cancer Research Foundation and the Susan G. Komen Foundation to um, obtain biospecimens for patients participating <coughs> in the trial, which made this analysis possible. So late recurrence in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer is a huge clinical problem, and uh, some, some experts in the field have dubbed this to be the next frontier uh, for uh, research. Um, it accounts for about half of all recurrences in ER positive breast cancer, and it's generally defined as recurrence occurring five or more years after diagnosis. Uh, that's, that's a historical precedent that's based on the fact that generally in the past we've, we've recommended at least a five-year course of endocrine therapy. In a recent uh, meta-analysis um, that was reported in the New England Journal of Medicine, the 10-year the risk, uh, recurrence risk after a five-year course of endocrine therapy was 5, 10, and 22 percent uh, for patients who had 0, 1 to 3, and 4 to 9 positive lymph nodes. With regard to the adjuvant therapy you, we use to prevent recurrence and biomarkers for late recurrence, um, we know that uh, adjuvant chemotherapy predominantly decreases early recurrence within the first five years of diagnosis. And more recently, we've come to recognize um, that extended adjuvant endocrine therapy beyond a course of five years, either with tamoxifen or with aromatase inhibitors, can provide some incremental uh, benefit, which ra ranges from 2 to 4 percent. Um, there are some tests that um, can provide information about late recurrence risk. These are generally gene expression assays obtained on the primary tumor at the time of diagnosis. And in general, in those, uh, in those assays that have shown this, the clinical validity for this specific association, there's about a two-fold higher, a 2.5-fold higher risk of recurrence for those who are classified as high versus low risk by these assays. We hypothesized that um, the detection of circulating tumor cells in patients who are five or more years after diagnosis might be um, a clinically useful way to apply this technology for a couple of reasons. First of all, with analytic validity, that is the reliability, the technical issues related to the reliability of the test, this is an FDA cleared blood test for enumerating uh, CTCs in metastatic breast cancer. And with regard to clinical validity, we know that, that the presence of CTCs and their CTC burden um, is associated with prognosis in, in metastatic breast cancer. And we also have some information indicating that the presence of CTCs and CTC burden is associated with recurrence in early breast cancer from three studies shown here, where the CTC detection rate, this is at the time of diagnosis, after surgery, and generally before systemic adjuvant chemotherapy, was in the range of 20 to 25 percent. And after a median follow-up of anywhere from three to five years, those uh, patients who were CTC positive had about anywhere from a two to a five-fold higher risk of recurrence. Although this, these studies show clinical validity, that is an association between a positive CTC test and recurrence, there was little clinical utility from this information. That is, it didn't necessarily, it wasn't useful in, in implementing a change in treatment because all of these patients were going to receive systemic therapy. So we applied this assay to patients who had previously enrolled on a prior trial. They had stage two to three breast cancer. They had received a standard uh, chemotherapy, modern chemotherapy, including an anthracycline and a taxane. And if they had estrogen receptor positive disease, um, they received at least a five-year course of endocrine therapy. So we went back to these patients who we were following anyway as part of this clinical trial. And we asked them, would you be willing to provide a blood sample for us to determine uh, to do this test, and, and then we'll continue to follow you as, as we would normally do. And we would not re report the test result back to you. We also were collecting other uh, blood specimens from them at the time that they enrolled in the trial, and then annually for five consecutive years. So over a course of about three and a half years, we enrolled 547 patients. This accounted for about 9 percent of the, all, all of the patients who enrolled in the, on the original trial. And the characteristics are shown here. Uh, 56 percent were 50 or older, 
59 percent had a tumor uh, at least two centimeters. Uh, 73 percent had node positive disease. About two thirds had hormone receptor positive disease. Uh, a little more than half had high grade tumors. And uh, of the 330 patients who had uh, hormone receptor positive disease where we had information, 88 percent of them were taking endocrine therapy at the time of the CTC sampling. After we completed accrual, about one year after completion of accrual, we analyzed the data. And at the time of the analysis, the median follow-up was 1.8 years with a range of out to 3.9 years. And we found that about 4 percent of patients uh, who had hormone receptor positive disease had a recurrence. This was among the 353 patients who had hormone receptor positive disease. And in addition, we found only one recurrence among the 193 patients who had hormone receptor negative disease. This was actually not even a distant recurrence. This was a local regional recurrence, whereas all of the recurrences in the hormone receptor positive group were distant recurrences. So this actually confirmed what we, what we had known in that the hormone receptor positive disease is associated with a higher risk of later recurrence. We also looked at the proportion of patients who were positive for CTCs. Overall, this was about 4.8 percent. And there didn't seem to be much of a difference in the hormone receptor positive group, 5.1 percent, versus the hormone receptor uh, negative group, 4.1 percent. But because we had essentially no recurrences in the hormone receptor negative group, the subsequent analysis I will show you will be restricted to the 353 patients with hormone receptor positive disease. And here are the main results. This is a Kaplan-Meier curve showing the time to recurrence for those who are CTC uh, negative on the top and those who are CTC uh, uh, positive on the bottom. And those patients who were CTC positive had nearly a 22-fold higher uh, likelihood of having a recurrence, which was highly statistically significant. When we did a multivariate analysis that adjusted for clinical covariates such as age, tumor size, um, nodal status, and grade, um, this very strong association uh, persisted with a hazard ratio of 18.1. The median time to recurrence in those who were CTC positive was 1.6 years. So this, is, um, uh, so this is a fairly long lead time, and for some it was high as uh, at least uh, 2.8 years, with a, range of, uh, with a lower range of uh, six months. If one looks at the likelihood of having a recurrence per person year, uh, it was approximately 25 percent for patients who were CTC positive and uh, only 1.5 percent for those who were CTC negative. And the positive predictive value of having a positive test for recurrence by two years uh, was 35 percent for those who had a positive CTC assay. And perhaps more importantly, the negative predictive value was 98 percent for recurrence of two years. In other words, if someone had a negative CTC test, there was less than a 2 percent chance that they would have uh, a recurrence within the next two years. So what are the implications here for clinical practice and for clinical research? Well, first of all, this provides proof of concept of the clinical validity. Um, this provides level one evidence, the highest level of evidence supporting CTCs as a biomarker prognostic for late recurrence in this specific subgroup of patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative early breast cancer, which accounts for about two-thirds of all breast cancers. It, uh, secondly, it, it demonstrates a very high level of risk stratification, a 20-fold higher a risk, which far surpasses other biomarkers that are, that are currently available. And I think very importantly, it supports the concept uh, of perhaps a new paradigm, and that is to have a second decision point to tell a therapy for individual patients based on a biomarker that's obtained not at the time of diagnosis and not making all decisions at the time of diagnosis, but making a second decision point five years after diagnosis that's based not only uh, on the patient's tolerance to prior therapy and their risk of subsequent recurrence based on clinical pathologic features, but also integrating uh, a biomarker, perhaps this biomarker, to assist in making a decision. However, we still have work to do. Uh, we need further study to really nail down what the clinical utility of this information is. That is, if we have a negative CTC assay, can we really effectively spare continuing extended adjuvant endocrine therapy uh, beyond five, five to seven years? Secondly, what do we do for those patients who have a positive assay? We know that we ha they have a high recurrence rate. What can we do to prevent it? In order to, to address this issue, we will need to uh, design clinical trials where we will randomize patients to new therapeutic uh, strategies that are approved, perhaps, in the metastatic setting, such as CDK4-6 inhibitors, 
Also, there are new oral selective estrogen receptor down regulators, drugs like fulvestrant that are, uh, that are currently available that we only give by intramuscular injection. They're effective in patients who, who've had progressive disease on a prior aromatase inhibitor. And uh, finally, we need to compare uh, this with other uh, new and emerging technologies like circulating tumor DNA, and perhaps use these in combination with, with these assays. Thank you for your attention.